Well, on a day that Congress MP Shashi Tharoor has openly expressed frustration at the delay uh, that the party has uh, been taking in appointing a new president. It's been more than two months now, in fact, since Rahul Gandhi resigned as Congress president. On this very day, Captain Amrinder Singh, the Chief Minister of Punjab, has now openly called for Priyanka Gandhi Vadra to take over as Congress president. Uh, still no signs of that CWC at the moment, though, but here to talk about what could the future hold for the Congress is Congress MP Shashi Tharoor. Uh, Shashi Tharoor, uh, thanks for talking to us uh, this evening on NDTV. Uh, first of all, let me straight off ask you uh, whether you agree with Captain Amrinder Singh who has uh, in a statement this afternoon uh, said that he would like to see Priyanka Gandhi Vadra as the head of the Congress party. I'm sure you would agree. Well, look, I'm sure that many party members will be delighted by such an outcome. But as you know, the Gandhi family itself has said that they're ruling themselves out. So that being the case, I think a process which actually elects a leader is the way that I would go. And at the end of the process produces uh, uh, a Gandhi, so much the better. If it produces somebody else, whoever wins from this process will actually gain in credibility and legitimacy from being elected by a large number of party workers rather than being appointed by what is, after all, itself an appointed committee, the present working committee. I think it's very significant what you're saying. You're, you're, you're saying that uh, it, should, it should be an election process, fully transparent, and not the kind of selection that has been done uh, by a body like the CWC in the past, even if it's Priyanka Gandhi. Correct. I think, for example, that when Sonia Gandhi ji was elected president, after uh, defeating Jitendra Prasad Sahab in a serious vote, it immensely, immensely added to her stature and legitimacy and credibility uh, because uh, she became not an anointed president but an elected one, reflecting therefore the wishes of the party officials. And this is, I think, a healthy precedent. Uh, it, it is something which in many ways I think would uh, be healthy for the party. Um, as far as the Gandhis are concerned, I'm not the one to say whether they will decide to uh, come out of their own self-denial and decide to participate. But as we know, the last word on the subject so far is that they're not interested. So I don't think there's any point in doing any kite flying for individual names. I would much rather speak for a process from which whichever name that emerges will gain in influence, in legitimacy, in credibility, and in visibility. Because we've seen this with the Conservative Party election in Britain where a party in disarray was able to galvanize the interest of the nation by its electoral process to find a successor to Prime Minister Theresa May. And if we could do something similar in the Congress party, I think the nation will wake up and pay attention once more to the Congress party's uh, potential to represent the voices of all those who did not vote for the BJP. You said another important thing just now. You talked about you know, the CWC and the fact that it has... Uh, it is also a selected committee in a way that makes the decisions in the Congress. Now, is there a need to therefore overhaul uh, the CWC as well, the working committee? I, and you're right, there are so many members of that Congress working committee who've never won an election, uh, who have either won an election decades ago or, or, or you know, haven't recently won anything. So would you, would you say that that too needs to be disbanded and you need to start from scratch? Well, I would think that the electoral process would also be for the CWC itself. I think there's a, a great deal to be said for the extraordinarily good service that has been provided by many members of the present CWC over the last 20 or 25 years. But no one can seriously deny the need for fresh blood. And that fresh blood is best emerging from the party itself. We have two possible electoral colleges. One is the AICC, which is about 1,000 people, and the other is the... AICC plus PCC delegates, the Pradesh Congress Committee delegates, and that's about 10,000 people. I would think the larger body would be the right electoral college, uh, could be a postal ballot system or whatever with named individuals, and we could easily have, emerging from this, a very interesting and credible outcome. You could actually have initially as many candidates who want putting the names forward, uh, either the CWC, if it hasn't dissolved itself, or the AICC could narrow it down to let's say two names and send those two names to the um, general membership of 10,000, let them choose, or three names. Something like that would be a very interesting uh, process. The nation would follow it, the media, all of you would follow it, and I think the resulting person 
would be what we need, which is someone who can both right. energize the party workers and inspire the voters. Inspiring the wo voters is equally important. See, w w what is significant in what you're saying, Shashi Tharoor, is that, uh, uh, you know, as, as you said right at the beginning, let it be an election no matter who it is who contests, even if it's Priyanka Gandhi, let it be an election. Now, I'm sure you know this, but there are many Congress leaders uh, who are very privately, you know, talk about how reluctant people are in the party to suggest, uh, you know, names outside of the Gandhi family or to suggest themselves uh, to, you know, put themselves up for election or, or selection at this point uh, because they, they feel that, look, we just don't know what the role of the Gandhi family will be. Uh, and is that part of the problem that, uh, you know, the, the party is a little hesitant to look outside the family fold? Look, all I can say is that's all the more reason why, instead of floating individual names, we should be talking about a process. If there is an open process, I'm confident it will attract some of the best, the brightest in the party, people with organizational experience, uh, and I hope relative youth, who would like to come forward. Uh, the fact that we haven't got even an interim president, uh, or if we do, no one knows who it is because no announcement has ever come, uh, then is, is actually something that discredits the party in the eyes of its own colleagues. I mean, I'm speaking out mainly because I got tired of hearing this from so many colleagues, MPs and non-MPs, who have dropped by and, and made their views known to me. And I felt that unless somebody was able to bell the cat, we would continue doing all of this behind closed doors and hushed whispers. And in an open democratic party, that's not the right way. It should be something, surely, that we can actually engage the overall membership in and at the same time inspire the, the electorate, the ordinary citizens of this country who ultimately will decide our electoral future. Well, one of the other important things you've said, uh, and, and you, you know, you've talked about the infighting in the party in various states, and you've given the Karnataka example, for instance, when D.K. Shivkumar was in Mumbai and no national leader was there to really support him. And, and that's a very important, uh, you know, part of what is happening in the party today. And, how, you know, that, that is something that also needs to be urgently addressed, whether it's in Rajasthan, in Punjab, in Haryana, uh, and uh, in Karnataka. Uh, and is this, you feel, again, a fundamental challenge uh, that the Congress faces? Well, I must say that I am certainly of the view that a confident and on-the-ball president could well have prevented what happened in Goa or Karnataka, or at the very least, robustly led a fight for our side. In Karnataka, poor Mr. D.K. Shivakumar was almost alone, doing it by himself without a sufficient national leader of stature in his corner. Uh, in Goa, we were essentially uh, absent from the fray when we, we lost the state for all practical purposes. Uh, and presumably, there had been a process that led to this decision by a majority, a two-thirds of our, of our legislature party to defect en masse, all of this seriously troubles many of us. We have no doubt that the uh, elements in the BJP that are promoting this are not going to stop at two states. They have many, many more uh, surely planned in order to uh, destabilize the Congress party, both in states where we have a government and in states which are going to go to the polls. We must have robust focused and on the ball leadership to respond to this well uh, uh, again shashi tharoor sure uh, uh, you know again the, you know the point you made about the sense of drift why do you think there has been this kind of paralysis in the party though for two months i mean it's not like the congress hasn't been defeated before it's been through tough times before uh, and yet it, it's it seems that the party is paralyzed and are there more people like you mps in particular who want to speak out and who may speak out, uh, you know, in, in the next few days if things, you know, don't reach some kind of resolution? Well, they're speaking out privately. Many have certainly spoken to me and I'm sure to each other. And a lot of this happens uh, only behind closed doors. Uh, I've got a lot of people coming to me after I gave my interview uh, to PTI on Sunday saying that they were 100% uh, behind what, what I had to say. But so far, very few have been willing to say so publicly. And I understand and respect their reasons. For them, many of them, this is their only profession. Uh, they have abided by its rules and conventions for a long time. Whereas I am a, an ordinary citizen who has strayed into politics. This has not been my lifetime career. I see politics as a means to an end. And the end is, I think, better governance for my own people and my own country. 
And I think the Congress party is actually needed not just for Congress people, but for Indian democracy's own health. I think that Indian democracy needs a party that can express the voice, the aspirations, the values that the Congress party at its best is able to do, values of inclusivity and pluralism, which Rahul Gandhi very much tried to articulate during his ultimately unsuccessful election campaign, but which somebody has to pick up the baton and run with it. The aimlessness and drift, I'm afraid, has to be laid at the door of the present Congress Working Committee because they are the ones who've been empowered to take a decision. Either the methods they have chosen or the ways in which they've gone about it have not given them a, a, an acceptable result, but certainly it has now created a level of rumbling within the party, within the party which I hope they are now aware of because uh, if, if somebody doesn't bring it out into the open, it would be much worse for the party, just as we say, for example, that banning an organization drives undesirable habits and sentiments underground where it can fester and do greater damage to a society. Similarly, uh, not airing this discontent makes the discontent that much more dangerous and seething within a party and results in things like what happened in Goa and, and, and uh, what happened with some in Karnataka. It is better in a democratic party to express people's concerns. I'm speaking for the benefit of the party. I have no other agenda. I'm not running for any party position. I'm not seeking uh, in any way for my party to continue to drift in this manner. I want to see my party effective, strong, capable, a loud voice in this country for the right principles and values, and a vehicle that actually can capture the vast majority of the electorate that did not vote for the BJP. What you're saying is very significant because you're actually giving a warning to the CWC and the leadership today that if they don't get their act together and, uh, and, and, to, and, and you know, decide on the process of selecting a new leader quickly, there is the danger then of a further disintegration of the Congress. I mean, you're, you're saying that a Goa-like situation could be repeated in other parts of the country for the Congress, which you can't afford. Believe me, I'm not the only one saying this. I've heard this from the lips of people who spent far longer in the Congress organization than I have. And, and they're saying it on the basis of what they see as ground realities in their states. My state, in fact, is actually relatively comfortable. We did well in the elections. My workers and my party leaders are very happy. Uh, I'm not reflecting anything personal here, nor am I reflecting anything in my part of the country. I'm actually speaking for what I'm hearing and seeing nationwide. And I'm just doing it as a, a service to my own party that we absolutely have to wake up, open our eyes, smell the coffee, and get cracking. We cannot let this go on uh, because the impression of drift and indecision, uh, the impression it conveys is one that actually undermines faith uh, amongst those who have been looking to us to embody their hopes and aspirations. So if there is an election for the Congress president's post, Shashi Tharoor, would you throw your hat in the ring? If I, if I could ask you? No, I, do, I don't really think so, because to be frank, um, uh, if I were to do that, then I would have been one of those who'd kept silent. I think that uh, I am happy with my role in the parliament, where I have been, I believe, uh, active. Uh, I've, I've spoken over 30 times in this session. Uh, I believe I, I continue to use that uh, platform in order to advance the principles and policies of my party. Uh, at the same time, I don't have the organizational experience that many congressmen far younger than me have already acquired in the organization as general secretary, secretaries of the organization, uh, and who know how to deal with the organizational challenges and make the machine run. Uh, I, would, I would say the Congress needs all these people. We need a, uh, an organization person to run the organization. We need a, a voice to be able to speak out. and We need more of both, actually. But the fact is we need a president who in many ways can be a figure who can actually combine both skills and who can inspire okay. the, the public to pay attention to the Congress party so, again. So my final question, Shashi Tharudin, is that one of the other things Captain Amrinder Singh had said some time ago was that, it sh uh, that whoever takes over as Congress president uh, you know, should be somebody who is young. Uh, and that's something he, he pitched for. Uh, do you agree with that? Do you think it should be someone from the new generation or relatively newer generation of leaders in the party? Or, uh, you know, is, is that not relevant? No, no, I think I, I believe it personally would be a desirable outcome. And in casting my vote as a congressman, I would want to vote for a younger person, younger than myself. 
Uh, but at the same time, I really think that it should come from a fair process. Um, again, by picking a quality or an individual or a name, uh, we are arrogating, those of us saying that should not arrogate to ourselves the right to make the choice. The choice should come from the party workers, and that's why the largest possible electoral college, namely the PCC delegates, uh, and the, the larger expanded uh, uh, number of party workers recognized for their service at the grassroots, they should be the ones given a choice to vote for the most appropriate name. Let's say a dozen people put yeah. their names forward. Let's say the ICC brings them down. Have three names giving to the, given to the larger electoral college and let the party workers choose young or old, male or female. It doesn't matter. It's up to them. All right. Well, Shashi Tharoor, you've done some pretty frank speaking there, uh, saying that it's important for there to be a fair process to elect a Congress president, even if that person is Priyanka Gandhi, whoever it may be. You're emphasizing on the importance of that process and warning that if you don't sort out this leadership issue soon, then the Congress could face the kind of crisis it did in Goa with desertions uh, and, and a mass exodus. Thank you very much, Shashi Tharoor. Here's hoping that someone in your party uh, is listening today. Thanks very much.